Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Voss of Anatomy. Today we discuss the lungs. Now the lungs are the pair of respiratory organs which are situated in the thoracic cavity on the either side of the mediastinum and it is enclosed in the pleural sac. Now the lung, we first we see in the lung the weight. The average weight of a right lung in the adult is 700 gram and that of a left lung is average 650 gram. Now we talking about the color. The color in the newborn baby's lung is a rosy pink, whereas in the adult it is a dark brown or black in the color due to the deposition of a inhaled carbon particles. Now talking about the texture. In the adult lung, it is a spongy, a porous and the highly elastic and it crepitated on the touch because of the present of a air within the alveoli of the lung and the adult lung will float in the water. Now the fetal lung or the lung of the stillborn baby is not spongy but it is a solid and do not crepitate on the touch because it will not contain the air in its alveoli and it will sink in the water. Now this difference is helpful in the forensic medicine. Now we see the external feature. The each lung is a conical in the shape, right? So it is having, it is having an apex, a base, a three border that is anterior, posterior, and inferior, and having two surface, coastal surface and the medial surface. Now before I explain the, all the parts external feature one by one, first we see the side determination of the lung and the anatomical position as well. The so side determination first you should keep the lung in a such a way that its apex which is a blunted the conical part it is present upwards right. The second the large convex surface that is a coastal surface should facing outwards coastal surface should facing outwards. Now the last, the anterior border is sharp, anterior border is sharp and uh, short whereas the posterior border is uh, thick and rounded. So by that way you can identify the right lung and the left one and keep, you can keep the lung in the anatomical position. So this is the side determination of the lung. Now. Additionally, the right lung is having a three lobe, upper lobe, middle lobe and lower lobe whereas the left lung is having a two lobe, upper and the lower. But it is not always true, sometimes the right lung is having a two lobe and the left lung may have a three lobe. So you should not identify the side of a lung from the number of the lobes and the fissure which it divides. You have to identify the side only from the border and surfaces and the apex and the base. Now we see in detail the all the external feature. The first we see the apex. The apex is facing upwards. It is blunt and it is covered by the cervical pleura. Now the apex is crossing the anterior end of the first rib 3 cm superiorly and it crosses the medial half of the clavicle 2.5 cm superiorly. Now the first rib lies obliquely like this so it will not cross the posterior end of the first rib and it is limited above by the Simpson's fascia or the suprapleural membrane. Now the apex near the anterior part of its uh, medially here you can see the impression. This impression is produced by the subclavian artery. The groove is produced by the subclavian artery. Now talking about the base. The base is a concave in the shape and it rests on the dome of the diaphragm on the each side. Now this concavity is more marked on the base of the right side than on the left side because of a uh, 
lever which is present underlying the right dome of the diaphragm. So the base is also known as a diaphragmatic surface. Now we see the border. It is having three border: the anterior border, posterior border, and the inferior border. The anterior border is thin and the vertical, as it is wedged between the anterior thoracic wall and the pericardium of a heart. And the anterior border is occupied in the costomediastinal recess. Now, the anterior border of the left lung is interrupted in the lower part by a large nose, which is known as a cardiac nose. Below the cardiac nose, there is a tongue-shaped projection, which is known as a lingula, which is present only in the left lung. Now, talking about the posterior border, the posterior border is a larger than the anterior border. It is thick, rounded, and the ill-defined, and it lies in the paravertebral gutter. So that is a space on the either side of a vertebra. Now the it the posterior border is extend from the C7 to T10 vertebrae. Now the last is the inferior border. The inferior border is a semilunar in the shape. It is occupied in the costodiaphragmatic recess and the inferior border separate the base from the costal surface. Okay. Now we see the surfaces. It is having two surfaces, the costal surface and the medial surface. The costal surface is a large smooth convex surface which is related to the ribs and intercostal space and the, it is covered by the coastal pleura. Now this coastal surface in mid clavicular line related to the first to six ribs. In the mid axillary line it is related to the first to eight ribs. In the scapular line it is related to the first to ten ribs. So this is about the coastal surface. The second important is a medial surface. This wall is a medial surface that lies between the anterior and the posterior border. The medial surface is divided into the smaller posterior vertebral part and the larger anterior mediastinal part. The smaller posterior verte vertebral part is related to the vertebra, intervertebral disc, posterior intercostal vessels and the splanchnic nerve. The mediastinal surface is related to the mediastinum and it attached with the hilum. The hilum is a structure in the root of the lung through which some structure enter into the lung and some will leave the lung. Now the mediastinal surface, mediastinal part on the medial surface of each lung will source the impression which are different in the both the lung. Now we see one by one. First, this is the right lung. So, right lung in the mediastinal surface shows the impression of first the right atrium. This is the large concave impression in front of the hilum, which is of a right atrium. Now we know in the right atrium opens the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. So, superiorly you can see the another concave impression. This is of a superior vena cava and in lower part there is a small impression which may not sometimes seen. It is of a inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava is formed by the right and the left brachiocephalic vein. So, you may sometimes seen the impression of a right and the left brachiocephalic vein. Again, in the superior vena cava, opens the ajaicus vein, but before opening into it, the ajaicus vein make an arch above the hilum. So, above the hilum, you can see the arch, impression of the arch of the ajaicus vein, which opens into the superior vena cava. Okay. Now, last two impression, which is visible, just behind the superior vena cava, here, there is an impression of the trachea and most posteriorly there is an impression of the esophagus. The impression of the esophagus extend downward posterior to the hilum or the root of the lung. So these are the 
visible impression on the mediastinal surface of a right lung. Apart from the, this impression, it will also show the impression of a right phrenic nerve, right vagus nerve, but it is not clearly demarcated. Now we see the impression on the mediastinal surface of a left lung. The left lung shows the large concave impression in front of the hilum that is of a left ventricle. Now from the left ventricle we know arises the ascending aorta which makes a arch and then make a descending aorta. So here you can able to see <coughs> the impression of a ascending aorta, arch of aorta and the descending aorta. Now the arch of the aorta will give the three branch, the left common carotid, left subclavian and the brachiocephalic. Out of these three arteries you can see the impression on the mediastinal surface of the left lung, the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery which is going toward the apex. Okay. Now behind this left subclavian artery here it makes an impression of a trachea and the esophagus which is poorly marked on the left side okay so these are the visible impression on the mediastinal surface of the left lung apart from these the impression which can also present but poorly demarcated are the ejagus vein which is present along the impression of a esophagus then the left vagus now left phrenic now and left superior intercostal vein right so in short the right side there is an impression of a right atrium and the veins larger veins plus two tubes trachea and the esophagus on the left side there is an impression of a left ventricle and the larger artery that that is a ascending aorta arch of aorta descending aorta and the branches left common carotid left subclavian and two tubes trachea esophagus so this is the mediastinal impression of the right and the left lung now we talk about the lobes and the fissure the commonly most of the time the right lung is having three lobes upper middle and the lower which is divided by the two fissure oblique fissure and the horizontal fissure and the left lung is having two lobe upper and the lower lobe which is formed divided by only one oblique fissure the first talking about the right lung right lung is having a two fissure oblique fissure horizontal fissure the oblique fissure you can see it start above from the posterior border here the starting point lies 6.5 cm below the apex from the posterior border. It cuts the lungs obliquely downward and it is, it is reaching on the inferior border 7 cm lateral to the midline. This is the oblique fissure. Okay? Oblique fissure divides the lungs right lung into the superior and the inferior lobe second fissure is a horizontal fissure now the horizontal fissure see this is the horizontal fissure from where it start it start from the oblique fissure in the mid axillary line and it is crossing the lung horizontally and reaching up to the anterior border so it will leave the one middle lobe separately from the superior and the inferior lobe right so this is the fissure and the lung in the right lung whereas in the left lung there is only the one oblique fissure which is same as like that of a right lung okay so there is a no horizontal extra fissure and the no extra middle lobe in the right lung now we see the important of these fissures the oblique fissure form the part of the cleavage so during the inspiration the upper lobe of a lung will go the forward and the laterally during the inspiration and the lower lobe will going the downwards and the backward during the inspiration right now in the 
posterior anterior view of a chest x-ray the horizontal fissure can be seen in the 60 percent of the cases and to see the oblique fissure we have to take a lateral view of an x-ray now we see the root of the lung now the root of the lung lies medially root of the lung is a short broad pedicle which contains the structure which is connecting uh, lung with the mediastinum so it contains the structure which either entering into the lung or lives through the lung so this part of a lung is known as a hilum through which structure enter into the lung or lives through the lung now the component in the root of the lung are there is a principal bronchus which is present in two number on the right lung and it is one in number on the left lung this is the principal bronchus okay two on the right side one on the left side now there is a pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery which is present in the one in number on the both the side pulmonary artery there is a two pulmonary vein the superior pulmonary vein and the inferior pulmonary vein on the both the side superior and the inferior pulmonary vein now on the right side there is a one bronchial artery and on the left side there is a two bronchial artery right in the left side also contains some bronchial veins the lymphatics the pulmonary plexus of the nose so these are the component on the right and the left side so the only difference is about a bronchial artery and the principal bronchus principal bronchus is a two on the right side and the one on the left side whereas the bronchial artery is a one on the right side and the two on the root of the left side now we see the arrangement of the structure in the right root of a lung first we see anteroposteriorly and then supero inferiorly anteroposteriorly <coughs> first come the superior pulmonary vein then the pulmonary artery and then the two bronchus this is e arterial and high arterial bronchus the above downwards the structure are e arterial bronchus pulmonary artery high arterial bronchus and inferior pulmonary vein now we see the arrangement of the structure on the root of a left lung the arrangement from before backward it is same as that of a right lung the first anteriorly comes the superior pulmonary vein then the pulmonary artery and the most posteriorly the bronchus only one bronchus above downwards pulmonary artery bronchus and inferior pulmonary veins now the last point the root of the lung is covered by the both the visceral and the parietal pleura like a sleeve right now the extension of this pleural fold below the root this extension is known as a pulmonary ligament okay this pulmonary ligament contains the loose cellular tissue and the lymphatics now it's clinical important or the function are it provide the dead space so that the pulmonary vein especially the inferior pulmonary vein can expand to increase the venous return as during the exercise the second it allows the descent of a root of the lungs with the descent of the diaphragm during the inspiration so these are the two important of a pulmonary ligament so this is all about the lungs thank you if you like our video click on the like button and share with your friends to get the regular updates on anatomy video by viva voice of anatomy subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon